evening, Diner. Uh, my name is Marta Poshtat, and it's my great pleasure to welcome you all on the behalf of Amjam board and team. We're kicking off in style. Uh, it's a big honor to have Ambassador Georgette Mosbacher with us today. Um, Ambassador, a very well, warm welcome, and thank you for accepting the invitation to uh, be with the Amcham family and friends in the live conversation. I'm delighted to be here. I don't know if this is. I think you need to keep it closer, too. Oh, oh there you go. I got to just kiss it. I got it. Okay. <laughs> okay. We have scheduled 30 minutes for this conversation, um, given your tight schedule, but I got some good news for the audience. We're going to spare the last 10 minutes for your uh, questions. Um, Ambassador, we've just heard you in the main stage panel uh, on energy, green, uh, New Deal, and it's fantastic to hear your voice again in Poland, but I, but I feel we need to make justice to the audience curiosity. So I'd like to ask you, what are you up to nowadays and what kept you busy since you left Warsaw? Well, where do I start on that? Um, first of all, I miss Warsaw, I miss Poland. Um, and I'm very, I have to say, Marta, you've been one of the closest friends that I've made when I was here and, and I value your friendship and your counsel and I'm delighted to be here with you. Uh, first of all, I'm renovating an apartment in New York and anyone who knows what that's like is a nightmare, but on top of COVID, it's a double nightmare. Um, I had both of my Moderna vaccines, and then I got COVID. So I thought I was safe with two shots, but fortunately it wasn't serious. I, it was like having the flu. Uh, and so I took on the co-chairmanship, which is what I'm really proud of, for at the Atlantic Council of the Three Seas Initiative. And the Three Seas Initiative, I believe to be transformational for the region. And to be co-chairing with General Jim Jones is an honor for me. And it keeps me also involved in the region. Is that, a, do you think that's enough? <laughs> I, I think so, that's enough. Uh, if there are more questions to the private side of things, uh, we can get them in the Q&A. Okay. Um, Georgette, you've always been a great partner to Amjam and US investors. And the few uh, recent months have been bumpy uh, when it comes to the transatlantic relationship. Being somewhat from the outside at this stage, what's your view on the U.S. investment growth in Poland going forward? Look, investments go where it's, it has certain attractive uh, metrics, all right? And Poland, in my opinion, Central Eastern Europe is where the growth is coming in the next uh, decade, not Western Europe. Uh, and why? because Poland can take advantage of the supply chain situation with China, because Poland is a trusted ally, uh, and it will, it will pick up a lot of that supply chain. Also, you have an extraordinary um, education system. You, uh, you graduate more uh, engineers every year than all of the EU put together, and that's where tech is going. So tech goes where the engineers are. And uh, you have a stable economy, you have a stable currency, you have low inflation, um, you have a democratically elected government, no matter what the fake news says about that. Uh, I disagree strongly. I do not believe that Poland is backsliding dem democratically. No one challenged your election, no one. Not anyone in the world. Your election was free and fair. And there wasn't a soul that challenged that. So look, uh, you're gonna tweak some things like the judiciary. It took us, took us a long time to get there. And um, we are still making those adjustments. But companies go where they can make money, where they have, you have a very robust middle class uh, at a, a high standard of living at a reasonable price, that attracts talent. Uh, so I really see uh, uh, Central Eastern Europe, and particularly Poland because it leads Central Eastern Europe, as uh, the next big 
big investment opportunity. Thank you, Georgette. As you, as you said, you're visiting Carpatch and this forum today in your Atlantic Council Chairwoman hat, where you're responsible for the Three Seas Initiative uh, program. So I'd like to ask about your perspective on, of this um, initiative's development going further. What's your view on setting up the 3SI Secretariat? And what would be your advice to US businesses around 3SI? <coughs> I, my, I'll take the last part of that question first. I think any U.S. business that is not looking at 3SI and the opportunity in Central Eastern Europe is missing out on an opportunity. Now, 3SI, 3Cs initiative, we have uh, all but two countries have invested in the fund. When you have a country putting money in a fund with other countries. First of all, the fact that you could get nine countries to agree, nine countries to trust each other, to, put, to, to pool their money, that's a big message. That means those governments are willing to guarantee these infrastructure projects. And that's very attractive because these are long-term investments with a a competitive rate of return, and now everything is about wanting to invest in green infrastructure, and the three C's gives you that opportunity. So I think it is going to be transformational. Thank you. We all know that you came to diplomacy with legendary business experience, so it would be a waste if we didn't touch upon it uh, today. If you were approached uh, by an investor, what would be your sales speech for Poland? Ah, it's a, it's a good question, Marta. My sales speech for Poland. Um, well, I do think I would need to work on my brand. I'd invest in brand Poland. I would define what it is that you think of when you think of Poland. Uh, I would like to see it become the Silicon Valley of the EU because of the engineers, the high-tech talent here, this is where the innovation, and so that would, be my, that would be my pitch. You want to go where there's highly educated workforce, particularly in the STEM uh, fields, and Poland is that. It has 38 million people, but if you put it in the three C's, it's 100 million people. So, uh, that would be my pitch. Really point out the, the fact that you have all this high-tech talent here. Thank you. And now we have some time to uh, collect questions from the audience. Are there, is there any interest? Phil, do you have a question? Hello, Ms. Mosbacher. Philip Goss from Perbo Brewery Lubelskie S.A., the brewery in Lublin, president. Yes. Uh, two questions for you. Number one, how can Poland better cooperate with both sides of the political aisle in the United States? Good question. That isn't easy. It's not easy for both sides of the political aisle to talk to each other, let alone anybody else. But the way I, th and, and they need, to, in my opinion, the best way to do that is to engage, to invite the, uh, you see the United States Congress really runs the show in the United States. So people think it's the president, but all the funding and everything comes from the Congress. So I would invite more these congressional delega de delegations, take them to companies like yourself, uh, let them uh, sit and see what's happening in Poland instead of reading the misinformation. And I think they have to engage closer with the stakeholders in the United States. And I would also say with 10 million polls in the United States, you have your own TV stations, radio stations, newspapers. Uh, the uh, Polish community in the United States is very, very active. And I think they should better engage them to put out the message. 
from our own experience, we've had a lot of success from the Lublin region with Wisconsin at the state level in the U.S., and that's perhaps one avenue we can explore better, exactly. not federal, but state level. Exactly. Second question from a rather uh, different angle. What, in your position, do you see as the advantage for Poland to become a nuclear power, not in the sense of military, but in the sense of electrical generation? Absolutely. Why go nuclear in an age when we have wind and solar that's really pushing the envelope? Because if you do the math, there is no way you get to uh, carbon neutral with wind and power. Not possible. Not if you want a consistent, uh, resilient power grid. It can't be done, at least not today. So whether uh, nuclear has been demonized, but the truth is it's the safest, cheapest, cleanest energy. And it's going to have to be part of the mix. Poland understands that. Poland has both the uh, will within the government as well as uh, the public sector to, uh, to go in the direction of nuclear. And if you look at what the technology in nuclear, we're making major strides there. I think the small modular reactors, the SMRs, will be a game changer, and that uh, technology is within our reach. Thank you. Thank you so much. Do we have more questions from the audience? Uh, in, case, uh, in case we don't, thank you so much, it's Ambassador. It's It's always it's good to be here at AmCham. And please uh, be back with us, with the AmCham community. Again, always. We're looking forward to it. Thank you so much. Right. Enjoy the forum, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Pleasure to be with you.